All right, let's give the Lord a big hand clap today. Come on, let's give Devin a hand clap, this guy. What a great guitar player, man. Love you, Devin. I tell you what, um, I just saw the video announcements. I don't know if anybody in this room have, has not been baptized, but I feel like I need to make mention of that. If you've called Jesus your Lord and Savior, you have not been baptized, get here, get signed up for that celebration Sunday, which is on the, the 29th, I believe, at the end of this month. Invite your family. Uh, get them here. You can sign up on the Church Center app. Um, it's a, it's, man, it's just you getting your game jersey that day. That water does not save you. Can I say that again? The water does not save you. We believe the blood of Jesus Christ saves you. Whenever, you. whenever you call on Jesus, that's when you get your home in heaven, your relationship with God. The water is a symbol. It's an outward expression of an inward faith in Jesus Christ. It's telling everybody in the room that, hey, I'm going to live for Jesus now. So I encourage you, if you haven't done that, do it. Amen, church? Come on, get baptized. Well, hey, I'm excited about the word tonight. Um, for multiple reasons, but I'm going to get right into it. So I want to pray and ask God's presence uh, with us tonight. You know what I'm going to do first? Let's do something different. Let's read the word together tonight. Uh, would you stand on your feet? Uh, you can turn in your Bibles if you want, or you can just listen to me read it. It's 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read out of the ESV tonight. So if you don't have that, you can just, uh, just stand in honor. You know, we don't often stand in honor of the word, but isn't it good sometimes just to stand in honor of the word of God? So let's do that tonight. I'm going to read it here out of the ESV, 1 John 5, 1 through 5. It says this, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love, uh, when we love God and obey his commands. For this is the love of God that we keep his commands and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? Amen. Let me pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your holy scriptures, Lord, your divine text, Father God, this infallible, wonderful, beautiful word that we stand upon today. We thank you for it. We thank you that we learned that we have victory and that we've overcome the world, Father God, even our faith, Lord. We bless you and thank you for your scripture today. Now, Lord, I pray you would anoint me today. That, that, that my tongue would be like the pen of a ready writer, that I would speak your oracles, your word, your way, Father God, Lord, where I am weak, Lord, I pray you are strong, Lord, and in my weakness, your, your, your strength is made perfect, Father God, and your power is made perfect, Father God. I pray less of me and more of you, Father God. I pray hearts are open, wide, and ready to hear a word from God today that will change and transform and, and, and alter the future for many, many people here today. We bless you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, amen. You may be seated. So in this scripture, we really pull our, our big idea we always want to start with the text, right? We want to pull the big idea out of the text. We never want to have a big idea and then throw a bunch of text on top of it. I don't want to say you never want to do that because you can still preach like that. It's okay. Topical preaching, it's fine. But whenever you pull an idea out of text, it's a lot easier to preach it. I don't know if you've ever preached, but this is an easier way to preach. And so we look at the scripture, one that we really want to focus on, and it's uh, verse 4. We'll start there again. It says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. I'll go on to five. It says, who is it that has overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? Believers in the room, I want you to know right now that if you believe on Jesus Christ, that you have overcome, that God through you have, has overcome hell, the grave, and the death that you would have faced or you would have faced. God has overcome that on Jesus' behalf through you. It's a done deal. You have victory. Our victory is found, and the scripture tells us our victory is found in our faith. It's in our belief. It's in our faith in Christ Jesus. And really outside of that, you know what? You can have some small victories in life. You can have some even large victories in life without faith. But it's not real victory. 
It's not complete victory. It's not eternal victory. Today, I want you to know that very important fact because you can have experiences of victory in life. You can, man, you can win a foot race without faith. You can win a raffle. Some of you ladies in the room, mothers in the room that were in that raffle on Sunday, you may have won the raffle on Sunday. You can win that without faith. You can have a telemarketer call you and tell you you've won a brand new car and all you have to do is give them a social security number. That's, that's a victory, right? Some of those things aren't victories. But some of those victories you can have and some of those victories are great. And I love, I love to win. I don't know if anybody else in the room is competitive, but I love to win. Show of hands in the room, how many of you guys are competitive out there? Yeah, we've got some competitive. Look around really quick, take note, just take note. We're gonna have an arm wrestling competition here in one moment. And you don't want these guys as opponents, believe me. Because they'll break their own arm before they lose, I promise you. Some of these guys who are more competitive. I'm the competitive type. But there are some opponents out there who are more competitive and who are going to fight harder. But the Bible talks about an opponent. The Bible talks about an enemy, rather. In 1 Corinthians chapter, um, chapter 15 through 26. And it refers to this enemy as the last to be destroyed, as the last opponent to be overcome, and that is the opponent of death. That's the biggest opponent. Really, that's the greatest opponent. I want to remind you today that the coworker that you're struggling with, that is not your greatest opponent. The Republican or the Democrat, they're not your greatest opponent. The person in the other car that you just got mad at, that is not the greatest opponent. Death, and more specifically, a spiritual death, is the greatest enemy that you will ever face. And therefore, you can also have a great victory because Jesus Christ overcomes that. You can have victory. And this whole message tonight is about your victory. You can claim victory. You can walk in victory. But how do we do that? Because that's the big question, isn't it? We want to walk in victory. We want to have a victory in our life. How do we do that? Well, the scripture tells us so simply. It says it's our faith. We can overcome the world and it's with our faith. How do we ensure we walk in victory? Well, number one, we have to be born again. Tonight I'm talking to a, a mostly believing crowd. You're here on a Wednesday night, so I would assume that, I would safely assume that most of you have called Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. I don't want to completely assume that because I want to teach this element. And I, want to, I want to expect God to send the lost here no matter when the doors are open. But you're here to learn something tonight. And you're actually, man, Christians all over the world have stopped going to church even on Sundays. Can you believe it? 40% 40 of the church-going Christians stopped going to church even on Sundays. So you're doing pretty good to be at a church house on Wednesday night. Give yourself a hand clap. Seriously. Thank God. Jesus said this, John 3, uh, 3 through 6. He said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. The moment that you receive Jesus Christ and you, 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 you receive the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you stepped into victory. You stepped into victory for the rest of your life and into eternity. It was the birthing point of faith in your life. You received his victory over the world in that moment. You were victorious. Everybody just say, I'm victorious. You know, but a lot of times Christians, we can have victory and we can walk in victory and we can believe we have victory from death and from sin, but we don't walk fully in victory. You see, there's some other opponents, some other enemies really that all come from the same place that we lend to and we, we say it's okay to be defeated by these guys. Some, some opponents uh, like um, sickness, some opponents like depression, poverty, battles with education, issues of sin like pride and lust and anger. These are opponents in our lives. And some Christians walk around having victory over sin and death, but they don't completely take victory in every area of their life. I want you to know you have victory today, church. Over every single avenue in life, God has given it to you through Jesus Christ. And these opponents I just outlined, they can look like pretty big opponents. They can look like major opponents and have you questioning whether you're victorious or not. 
I think about David walking on the battlefield, little David, who was tending sheep, who was the youngest of all of his brothers, who was the smallest of all of his brothers, the least likely to be picked prom king. He wasn't going to be the guy, right? But God appointed him and anointed him. He was the least likely. And in fact, he was half, he was a half son of his father's. So this is, an, this is an interesting deal. We see David walking onto that field, but David knew full well what his identity was. He knew that he had victory no matter what, and he had no hesitation. The scriptures do not, do not record any note of hesitation. There was no second thought with David when he walked onto that battlefield as a young man. He knew the victory. He knew the gift that God had given to him in victory. God had given him a gift of grace. Just like Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It's a scripture you find in the New Testament can shadow this. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. It is a gift of God. Amen, church? Man, it's, what's a, it's such a beautiful thing that we can have that gift of God. And, and like I said before, uh, I think Christians will walk around sometimes, they'll walk around defeated feeling. They'll walk around, walk around in a defeated state of mind. And they'll allow that victory to be taken from them from worldly circumstances and worldly things that have happened. Has anybody ever been guilty of giving up their victorious status? You have been given a status of an overcomer. According to uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 37, you are now an overcomer, all right? You're more than a conqueror, amen? And sometimes we relent that and we give that away to the enemy and some of the other opponents that he'll throw at us, those hard things that I was talking about. We'll let those things go. We'll give those things to him. We'll give up our status. And that doesn't need to be the case. I'm so thankful that God has just given us a wonderful, wonderful victory in Jesus Christ. Tonight, God wants you to know that. You may have been fighting in this place of defeat. I mean, think about the last two years of our life. Many of us have experienced defeat, and really, geographically, where we're at, guys, it hasn't even hit us as hard as other places. You travel to different places in America, you travel other places in the country, you're going to see places where even shut down. Every other business is completely out of business now. You couldn't even walk on the streets in some places in America. So there was major loss. And I know we've experienced loss here. I'm not trying to downplay that loss that we've experienced here. But what I'm trying to illustrate to us is that we have been set up to take a mindset of losing and been okay with loss in our life. The devil's tried so hard to degrade that victorious feeling in the Christian so that we, okay, we're okay with losing. I'm okay with losing this or that. We have sacrificed those things instead of taking and stepping into full victory that God gives to us. Amen? Well, there's some big opponents out there. And God wants us to overcome those things. Amen? Amen. You know, I I had a big opponent this morning, actually. Uh, It was on the pickleball court. I don't know if anybody here in the room has heard of pickleball. Anybody here ever heard of pickleball? Yeah? Yeah? So I played pickleball at 8.30 this morning with a good friend of mine. And actually, it's one of the fastest growing sports in America. There's some people in the room right now that play pickleball. I actually got to go on a double date, Stevie and I and Mr. Paul, Miss Norma here. Give those guys a hand clap. There are ushers here at the church. They also clean the church house. So you have a clean seat in the church house today because of, of guys like this. Uh, there's another guy on our security team right now walking in our kids' hallway, keeping our kids safe, David Hahn. He's an incredible pickleball player. Uh, also love him very much. And then uh, Will Carson up here, he's with his family today too. Uh, Benny here with him, a friend as well. But Will, would you do this? With, would you come up here and help me today? Y'all give Will a hand clap as he comes up. Come on up here, Will. So this morning, uh, Will and I got up early. We got up, thank you, sir. Come on, look at that. Got up early, about 8.30, and uh, went over to play uh, pickleball. And Will, you don't know about this about Will, but Will's an incredible pickleball player. He's one of the best out there on the courts. And so we get out there, and we're having a great time, having a fun time. And and let me tell you this really quick, so you know about pickleball. It's basically a small-scale tennis. Not as small as like, like ping pong, but it's a, it's a bit bigger than that, and uh, you play with wooden paddles. It's an incredible sport. you got to hit the ball over the net. If you hit it into the net or you hit it out, you'll lose the point. Go see the other team, right? So I'm playing against Will, 
And going into the game, I know, I know that I'm going to probably get beat. Because Will's incredible at this game. I mean, Will's, Will's on point. I mean, just look at him. He's a pitcher of health. Look at the guy. This is, this is the pickleball pitcher right here. But he does a great job out there on the field. And so I go in with the mindset that I've already been beaten. And Christian in the room, I want you to know right now, I'll just take it to the spiritual world for a moment. We have got to get out of the mindset that we've already been defeated, that we have victory already going into these battles. We have to understand this. A point I want to make to you is that we're not fighting for victory. Can I say this again? We're not fighting for a victor. We're fighting from a victory. We're in the position of victory. If you know your position and it's victory, you'll win every time. And that's the case with Will. Will knows he's going to win, okay? Some might, call it, some might call it something else. I call it confidence. And he can come in and he can win because he knows he's going to win. And especially when he plays me. So Will's incredible, and we're going in there to play, and the mindset's totally shifted. The mind's different from me. And so I'm thinking, man, uh, he, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna wear me out. He's going he's gonna to wear me out today. But I have to change my mindset. I've got to change what I've been doing. I've got to change that status. And so we start to play, and, uh, man, we're having a great time. We're hitting back and forth a little bit. And, you know, thinking about this right now, sometimes, like I said, we forget. We forget what, what God has shown us. We forget what God is teaching us. We forget what God is preparing us for. Uh, and sometimes, in essence, when you forget those things, really you're fighting against God. Because you're, you're saying, man, I don't completely believe or completely agree with my position of power. And you almost side with the world. Has anybody ever done that? Start to take on the thinking of the world. And you'll even say things to God that are contrary to your Christian position. And so it begins to be like you're, you're, you're battling against the Lord. And how many of you guys know you're not going to win in that situation? You, you, you got to take a different angle. You got to do something different. You got to get on a different team. And so Will and I were playing and he's incredible at this. And so you got to dink it over the net. We're dinking like this. And, and this is actually not a bad way to dink right here. I, I've gotten a little bit better at this, but I know Will's position. He knows victory. He knows he's got his eye on the prize. And if I give him one too high, he's going he's gonna to slam it down on me. I'm not doing that again. My goodness. That hurt. Will knows his position. Amen. Hang on, Will. Hang out for a second. Will knows his position. He knows his tactics. He understands the promises he understands how to play. And in the Christian world, we should know the same thing. We should be well-educated enough to know how to play the game. We should be well-educated enough to know the tactics to be able to attack. <laughs> Instead, often we find ourselves fighting on the opposite side of God. And we've got, we've got things like depression. We've got things like sickness. And instead of believing what God believes, we're over here hitting back against God saying, hey, come on now, I want to be sick. I want to be in poverty. You know what we need to do? I, I praise God because this morning was a perfect illustration. Will and I are the only two people out on the court. And there's a lot of courts out there. Mr. Paul, you've seen it. Ms. Norma, you've seen it. There's a lot of courts out there where the only guys dumb enough to play in the, the wind. But it was fun. We had a good time. And by the grace of God... Two more players showed up. And at that point, I was like, listen, I got beat by Will like four games. It was bad. And I was like, I'm going to join a different team. And so those guys walk on the court. And, I, and the first thing I said, it was like, I was like, hey, you want to play those guys? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. So we get now instead. Of, and so they come up and they're on the, other side of this, on the other side of this court. And I changed position. Can you say change position? I changed position. I walked to the other side of the court. I got on the winter. I got on the winner's team. Because how many know God's the winner? And if you want to be victorious, you get on the right side of the court. Amen? And at that point, we, we, man, we whooped up on them, didn't we? We didn't lose a game because got, I got on the winner's team. Y'all give Will a big hand clap. Come on. Good job, Will. Thank you. I'd gotten so used to losing before I won today. How many of you guys have ever got loose, you, uh, just used to losing? Anybody out there? And you just, find, you just go with the mode. You're like, okay, I'm going to lose again. I'm going to lose again. I, I'm not even going to tell you the, the record of my senior football team. It was terrible. We got used to losing. Came from being champs, I mean like regional champs, 
the year before to an incredibly losing record. It was bad. It was 1-9. Whoa. She, she went to uh, the rival team in, in uh, our city, so she can say that. So we got used to losing. And it was like you went into every single game thinking you were going to lose the bat in the match. And I did the same thing. I can, I can just tell you right now, Will, I got used to losing this morning. And when I saw those other guys, I thought, I'm going to get on the winning team. I'm going to start to win today because I'm changing my position. I'm not going to fight against the winner anymore because I know the winner is always going to win. I'm going to fight with the winner. I'm going to fight against things that are contrary to what God says I can have. Number one thing we obviously already know is that we win against death and sin. And that's the thing about being born again. But the next thing I need to do, the next thing I want to do is I want to step into a better understanding. And that's constantly being renewed by the washing of the word. We need the word of God. We need to get into the house of God so that we're fed the word of God. We need to read the the word of God ourselves because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Amen. This is something that God wants us to, to grow in and he'll give it to us. Amen. We must regularly hear the word of God. And then you'll begin to take on those tactics. You'll begin to take on those different skills you need to defend against the things that are trying to to be in opposition. You'll know how to defend yourself against those things. If not, you can't step into victory. You have to hear, you have to develop your faith, which is how you overcome the world, by the way. Do you remember the scripture we just read? What does it say? I want to read it again. In chapter one, I'm sorry, chapter five, verse one through five. And in verse four, it says this, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You got to believe this. When you get this information, you get this knowledge, you begin to believe it. You begin to put it deep down with inside of you and then you can fight and then you can win. Amen. Now, I'm not saying you can only get this in the house of God, but I know this is a place where you're going to hear the word. It's going to be unfiltered. It's going to be, you're going to get the sense of the word as well. Uh, Nehemiah did this when he would preach. He gave the people the sense of the world, the word. Sometimes the words, man, it's tough to translate. It's tough to get. And sometimes you just need somebody to feed you a little bit, but you also need to be able to feed yourself. All right. If you're at a place where you just need milk, come in here every chance you get. I'm talking about spiritual milk. I'm not going to actually give you milk. It's gonna, that would be weird. But spiritual milk. I'm going to give you spiritual milk when you come in here. You're going to get it in a way you can understand it. But then going beyond that, you need to come in. You need to get bread. Children's bread, right? That's what our kids are getting in the back. Sometimes you'll get bread in here as well. A lot of times in here on Sundays and on Wednesdays, you're going to get meat. Amen? And in fact, you're not just going to get meat. You're going to get strong meat. Amen? Something that you chew on for a little while, right? Somebody gave me some all dad jerky the other day. I felt like I was chewing on a rubber tire. I mean, I chewed forever, but that's the, that's the kind of meat I want in the spirit. Something that's going to last a while. Something I'm going to think about for a while, right? Hey, it tasted good too. I promise you that. But it's, it's something that goes with you for a while. You need to get that when you come into the house of God. And you've got to seek that. And I'm so thankful. I'm preaching the choir when I say this. You guys are in here getting this every single Wednesday, every single Sunday. You've got to keep pushing deeper into that. Church doesn't save you. Church doesn't give you provision. But church gives you the word of God, which accomplishes all those things. It gives you faith, which then you can have victory from. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. Praise God. You know, we fight for this place for, for a lot of reasons. And this is one of the big ones. We fight for this place is because you can come in and you can get refreshed every time you come to the doors. You can get a word You can build your faith. You can step into victory. This is why we fight for this place. This is why I've been here and coming here every chance I can. If the doors are open, I'm here. Before I was obligated uh, uh, through resources, when I had another job, I was by vocation, I was here. Before that, when I was just a volunteer, I was here. I was in the door every chance I got because I knew what it was going to do for me. I knew it was going to step me into the next level of faith and give me victory that I didn't know that I could have. I was going to be able to step on the other side of the court, stop fighting against God with these things and start fighting against those things with God. 
start fighting with the winner. Amen, church? Amen. Can we give the Lord one big hand clap here? Praise God. I'll tell you what I want to do is I want to pray over you tonight for victory. Let's just do that. Bow your heads, close your eyes for one moment. If you're here today, I know, I know you're here because I felt by the Spirit of God whenever I was preparing this message. There are people who've been living in a, in a loss, just constantly living in a state of loss. And you've felt like you've been losing for two years now. And it hasn't changed. Nothing shifted. You've literally even said it out loud, I'm a loser. But I want you to know today that God is going to bring you victory. God is going to bring you a knowledge and a wisdom that only comes from him for you to be able to step more into victory every day. And that, that phrase will never come out of your mouth again. You've been overcome by stress. You've, over, you've been overcome by anxiety. What happens whenever we, whenever we experience loss, whenever we experience uh, the mindset of the world right now in loss is we get anxious and we get afraid and we, we have fear at every corner and, and it causes us to lose our focus in the situations where we need victory. The enemy tries to get us knocked off our game and he's been trying to do that with you for two years. Maybe he's accomplished that for two years, but I say no more today. I say no more today. I say you are a victor. You are more than a conqueror. You fight from a place of victory. You're not fighting for a victory. You're fighting from a victory. You already have victory. It's been given to you 2,000 years ago. And now today, you're stepping on the other side of the court. Now today, you're stepping on the other side of the battlefield. And you're fighting with the one that has victory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There are more with you than there are with them. It is us against them. Thank you, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would anoint the head of every single person in here today, Lord, with victory. With victory. With victory. With victory. With victory. We know that you are Jehovah Nisi, who is the Lord, our victory, who is the Lord, our banner. And we wave the flag of victory right now. You may just do that right now as a faith statement. Just begin to wave the banner of victory over your life right now. Right now. It's a spiritual movement right now. God's doing it right now. Lord, I thank you. I say victory. I say victory. I say victory now in Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name. We thank you, Father God. We believe it today in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap tonight. <laughs> Praise God.